Now I've seen this reaction lots of times, but this is the first time I've seen it in high speed, where we pour the solution in quite slowly, but then watch what happens. The reaction of copper with ammonia is quite a well-known reaction and often students, school children, come across it quite early on in their career. It's a reaction which gives both a precipitate and then a colour change. It involves copper sulphate, which in solution is a fairly pale blue. And you can imagine in the solution you have copper ion, Cu2+, surrounded by six water molecules, four that are close together and two that are rather further apart. This does not absorb light very strongly, so the solution looks very pale. When you add ammonia, which is alkaline in, when it's dissolved in water, you precipitate a pale blue solid, which is a mixture of copper hydroxide and copper sulphate, so-called basic salt. And then as you add more ammonia, this redissolves to give a very intense blue color. The blue color is due to copper ions, the same copper ions, but now with four ammonia molecules interacting with it in a tetrahedral shape. This is a baby toy that I got in Italy, but it's quite fun. So there aren't really jewels and cheese attached to it? No, 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 this is just a, there's pizza as well. So when the copper goes from this shape, that is quite pale coloured, to this one that is tetrahedral, the colour comes much more intense. And it is a very nice demonstration for people just beginning chemistry to see how copper can form so-called coordination complexes where a stable molecule like ammonia can actually bind to the copper ions. And what I find quite surprising is if you watch carefully, it really goes blue, dark blue, before you see the precipitate. Whereas chemically, it should be the other way around. You should see the precipitate and then the dark blue color. And my only explanation, and this may well be wrong, is that it takes time for the precipitate to form crystals that are big enough for you to see. When crystallites are very small, their size is shorter than the wavelength of light, so they appear invisible, though they can still absorb light. And then as they grow bigger, you see physical clumps of them because they're much bigger than the wavelength of light. And this growing of particles can be relatively slow compared to the initial precipitation, which forms really tiny ones. When you look at it at the end, it looks rather beautiful. It looks very like the planet Earth seen from space. Mm -hmm. 